Hi there, I'm Rio Folu. I work for Antashka's Learning About Forest Leaf Program. The plant I've chosen today is a much underrated Irish tree, the common alder, Annus glutinosa or Farnog Asquilga. It's a member of the wider birch family, a medium sized tree. It doesn't grow more than 20 or 25 meters and won't live much over 100 years old, a lot less if it's growing in stressful conditions. It's a deciduous tree, loses its leaves in the winter. It produces uh, small catkins about two inches long in the spring. These are wind pollinated and the female catkins go on to produce small cones. They're green initially and as the autumn passes into winter, they dry out, turn brown, open up and release small orange seeds which are distributed through the habitat by wind or in the water courses which are typically found below alder. Alder loves wet ground, it's synonymous with damp wet ground, riparian riverbanks um, and marshy ground. That's one of the reasons I've chosen it today, not just for the tree but for the habitat it exists often within. Sometimes the wet woodland habitat, some people know them as alder cars and they're incredibly rich environments full of various insects and plants and mosses. Um, other trees found here include willow, uh, I don't know is there one behind me, but I have some of the more common plants that are found in or on the edges of this type of environment. Flag iris, cuckoo flower, or lady's smock, ragged robin, there's a little bit of vetch there, some willow herb, and I think there's some meadow sweet around there as well. So the reason alder is actually able to survive in, in these quite inhospitable, sometimes infertile environments, is because of an amazing relationship it has, a symbiotic relationship with a bacteria called Frankia alni. So Frankia alni is able to sequester atmospheric nitrogen, which it exchanges with the alder tree for carbohydrates or sugar, which the tree has produced through photosynthesis. You can actually see this process in action if you sometimes if you peel back the grass at the base of an alder tree you might be able to find small orange nodules or nodes this is the bacteria interacting where the bacteria interacts with the tree so for this reason alder are known as a pioneer species um, and one of the early trees uh, in in ecological succession they don't tend to survive once a woodland has established their seeds actually need a lot of light to germinate um, there's actually an American a close relative of this an American alder red alder which is, is known by some in America as a glacier chaser that's because again of its ability to provide its own nutrients it's actually able to secrete a carboxylate a light acid which is able to mine trace amounts of phosphorus from the infertile glacial till below the tree okay so uh, there are some reasons i've chosen alder I, I think i have a special connection to it when i was young growing up in cork i planted a lot of alder with the local forester they're 30 feet tall now and anytime i go home i make sure and visit them and i really love going down there this is where i live in clare and it's very wet ground so actually alder one of the only trees that will grow on my land here and these ones that I'm holding are actually seedlings from those original trees planted all those years ago in Cork. I suppose one last reason I like it, I think it's kind of an underdog of a tree. It occurs in these uh, habitats that maybe we don't respect as much as we should. Some people would call them waste ground, these amazing habitats. So it's kind of an underdog. It doesn't have the prestige of maybe ash or oak, uh, but it's an amazing tree nonetheless. Um, so that's my contribution. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy the rest of this fantastic series by Burren Bio. Slán agus gurv